This is Lunchtime Agenda. G'day and welcome to the program. I'm David Lipson. The government's big tax grab has begun in earnest to fill the multi-billion dollar hole in the budget and smokers have been first to cop it. Increases in cigarette tax to begin in December this year will add another $5.3 billion to the Treasury purse over the next four years. The Treasurer is also selling it as a health policy. This, I know, won't be universally popular with all. It's a difficult decision, uh, but a decision which is taken in the best interests of the nation, uh, taking into account all the impacts it has, both on the government's budget and also on the health outcomes for Australia. Meanwhile, bank shares have taken a dive today off the back of reports that the government is considering a new levy on the banks for protected deposits of $100,000 or more. According to the Australian Financial Review, the levy would be somewhere between half and 1% and could reap the government another $5 billion or so. This was the Finance Minister Penny Wong responding to questions on this a short time ago. The Treasurer today has referenced the fact that the IMF and the RBA uh, have uh, put a view to the government about uh, uh, the need for a fund for, to cover deposit protection uh, and uh, the Treasurer has made clear he's consulting on that. Uh, but uh, as I've said to you before, uh, before a budget or budget update there's always speculation. Uh, a lot of it is not true, a lot of it is inaccurate. The opposition leader, Tony Abbott, says it's just further proof of a government addicted to spending. This is a government which can't control its spending. Uh, and because it can't control its spending, whenever it gets into trouble, it hits you, the Australian people, with more taxes. And all of these, whether it's a bank deposit tax, whether it's an increase in cigarette tax, it's all a hit on you, the people. Joining me on the program today, Liberal MP Paul Fletcher and Labor MP Steve Georgianis. Good afternoon to both Hi. of you gentlemen. Hi, Dave. First Hi, you, Paul. Steve Georgianis. I know you can't, can't confirm this, this bank levy report, but is there an argument, do you think, for a, a levy, an insurance levy, uh, that would ensure that uh, depositors are protected in the case of a bank collapse in this country? Look, um, as uh, we heard the Finance Minister say, that you'll be hearing lots of speculation between now and any budget announcements or any economic statements. Um, and I'm not going to uh, get into the game of uh, speculating, because uh, that's what it would be, speculating what's in and what's out. Um, there have been uh, r rumours, I suppose, today, or um, some sort of uh, news reports, uh, but nothing, uh, nothing has been uh, concrete in concrete, and there's nothing that's been announced by the Treasurer. So I'll allow the Treasurer uh, to make announcements uh, when he's going to make those announcements in due course. And as I said, there'll be lots of speculation, what's in, what's out. Uh, there'll be lots of furfies around the place. There'll be lots of things uh, that people are uh, uh, assuming will happen. So uh, that's where it's at. And I'm certainly not uh, in the position uh, to know what the economic uh, statement will be by the Treasurer in the next few days. Paul Fletcher, the Greens have been calling for this sort of thing for some time because the reality is if a big bank does collapse and it's considered too big to fail, it would be the government that would have to bail them out, as happened in the United States. So is this sort of levy justifiable in any way? Well, David, the issue in relation to the cigarette tax that's been announced today or the bank tax which is being speculated about uh, isn't so much the policy merits for and against. It's the question of why the government is looking at them now and the reason is that this is a government which is engaging in yet another desperate grab for cash and they're trying to dress that up by talking about the policy justifications. But it's not about policy, it's about the fact that this government is desperately short of money because it just keeps spending. It hasn't had the management disciplines in place and so here we are, a new treasurer just a few weeks into the job engaging in a desperate scramble for yet more cash. This is a government that keeps spending and spending and as a consequence of that it keeps taxing and taxing and taxing and what we need to get is a government that has control of the budget, control of spending and plans in a systematic way, unlike the desperate grab for cash that we're seeing from this government and the chaotic announcement, new announcement every day uh, that we saw with Prime Minister Rudd in his first term and we're seeing regrettably again. 
Sure, but the coalition won't wind back these increased taxes on tobacco. So can you really be critical of Labor for it? The point I'm making is that the style of government we are seeing with Mr Rudd back as Prime Minister is the same style of government we saw from him first time, the first time and it's the same chaotic financial mismanagement that we have seen from Labor for six years. Mr Rudd racked up deficits of $130 billion in total in his first three years as Prime Minister and as they kept spending and spending, in turn they kept desperately looking for new areas to raise tax. Now, the policy merits are neither here nor there. Uh, they're being trotted out as the justification. This is really about collecting more money, a desperate grab for cash. Steve Georgianis, if it is, uh, or if there is a, a policy merit to this, that it uh, will deter people from taking up smoking and save lives yeah. and, and money on the public purse, uh, why not tax alcohol as well? Can I just say Further. on uh, this proposal, this this uh, proposal that was announced today on the tobacco uh, on uh, the tobacco tax, is that it has a, uh, a three prong approach. One is that uh, money raised, uh, a lot of the money raised will go towards uh, cancer services and health services, which is very important. And we know that tobacco causes cancers and is a huge, uh, huge burden on the health system. Secondly, it will uh, help people to uh, give up tobacco uh, and the addiction of tobacco. And we know that uh, every time the price of cigarettes go, out, go up, we have people that do give up. And we know that tobacco kills over 15,000 people directly every year. And as governments, we have an absolute... Uh, uh, purpose to ensure that we do all that we can to uh, uh, assist people to give up uh, the addiction of tobacco. Uh, thirdly, of course, it will help the budget as well. But can I just say that uh, we should be doing all that we can to get the message out there, that, uh, especially to young people, uh, and this will help to deter young people taking up uh, cigarettes and tobacco. We see our hospital beds and in hospitals in every single state um, full of people that have uh, illnesses, diseases uh, that have been caused by tobacco. So if this assists people people to give it up, uh, which it will. I No doubt uh, we have been uh, at the forefront of tobacco reforms as we were with the plain packaging and we've seen that since the plain packaging has come into, uh, into place, uh, less people are smoking. Uh, and as I said, we've been at the forefront of uh, world leaders okay. in this okay. area. And what, and what every about time, the question every then time about it? What about the question then about alcohol tax? Why not up the tax on alcohol? That has all sorts of health problems as well. Uh, look, there is tax on alcohol, but tobacco is a direct link, immediate link. It's an addiction uh, that uh, most tobacco smokers don't smoke for uh, uh, socially, uh, social, uh, social events or um, uh, on occasions. They are addicted, and that's the whole purpose of tobacco. It addicts people, and they become chronic smokers, which then, uh, then uh, is, has a detriment effect on their health. Um, and can I say, every time we've proposed good reforms in tobacco, the opposition has opposed it. Every time uh, we okay. uh, bring in reforms, they oppose it. Uh, they're still, uh, we believe, receiving uh, um, uh, donations from big tobacco companies. We stopped uh, getting donations uh, many, many years ago from tobacco companies, and it's about time the opposition did exactly the same. Uh, I'll, we are I'll get a response serious to that about from Paul, people Paul giving Fletcher. up tobacco. Well, well Paul Fletcher. Uh, uh, on the, uh, the question of uh, donations, the important thing here is consistency. Now, Mr. Mr. Rudd, as a backbencher, took a trip to Germany that was funded by the uh, Korber Foundation, uh, which is the owner of a company that makes equipment for manufacturing cigarettes. So uh, let's just have some consistency here uh, and let's not have uh, the Labor Party uh, doing one thing, but then, or saying one thing, but then Mr. Rudd doing another. Mm -hmm. but okay, we well, let's, uh, $4 let's, million dollars let's, in donations. Today. Let's move on. Let's move on. I want to talk about the uh, corruption findings from ICAC yesterday against Eddie Obeid and Ian McDonald. We heard from Eddie Obeid today for the first time, and he described the whole process as a sham. Have a listen. Robertson and Sam Bastiari. I cannot believe these people who I supported, I mentored, I got them in their jobs. They don't give me the benefit that every Australian should have. You're innocent until proven guilty. Well, John Robertson's obviously the, the head of the Labor Party in New South Wales. Sam Dastyari hoping to enter the Senate here in Canberra at this uh, election. Steve Georgianis, those sorts of comments uh, can't help Labor quarantine itself federally from, uh, from those uh, findings yesterday, can it? 
Look, can I say uh, the allegations out of ICAC are shocking um, and uh, we should be doing all that we can to stamp out corruption. People who have broken the law um, should have the full extent of the law thrown at them. There is no doubt the Prime Minister made this statement the other day. Uh, that's why he announced uh, last month uh, zero tolerance to corruption uh, and ensuring getting a Labor Ombudsman uh, and doing all that we can to wipe it out. Uh, we don't need this sort of uh, uh, things in political parties as we've seen in uh, New South Wales. It is uh, unacceptable and as I said, uh, uh, the full extent of the law should be thrown at people that break the law or, are, or have uh, performed corruption uh, in their duties as uh, whether it be MPs, public servants, business, whatever. So the opposition has, has questioned uh, people like Sam Dastyari, Matt Thistlethwaite uh, coming into the parliament or in the case of Mr Thistlethwaite into the, the lower house. Are you fully comfortable with, with uh, their moves? Oh, look, certainly. Um, uh, this is about people who have broken the law or allegations have been made against people who have broken the law, as we saw in ICAC. And the Prime Minister made it quite clear that the full extent of the law uh, should be thrown at those people that have broken the law. And uh, that's what ICAC is doing. It's, it's come up with allegations. I believe uh, uh, the public prosecutor will be looking at it over the next few months. And uh, this sort of uh, behaviour should be wiped out. But to, but this, um, is how, uh, this, has got, this has hurt Labor's brand federally. Surely you can see that? Oh. Look, there's no doubt, but uh, this is a, a, an area, as I said, that um, we have come up, uh, the Prime Minister came up with statements last month about uh, ensuring that there is no tolerance whatsoever uh, and has put measures in place. We've uh, opened up our, our party to uh, uh, have uh, members, uh, a members' ombudsman, in other words, a Labor ombudsman, so members can complain uh, with their complaints. This is, uh, these are serious allegations, and as I said, they should be wiped out of uh, political they're, they're parties. They're not allegations, they're findings by the independent well, findings, uh, yeah. Hmm. And uh, as I said, the full extent of the law should be thrown at anyone that uh, has been found Paul, to be corrupt. Paul Fletcher, will this send more people to the coalition at the federal election, do you think? Well, I think if you just look at what Eddie Obeid himself said there this morning, Sam Dasjari is somebody he says he mentored. John Robertson, who's the New South Wales opposition leader, is somebody Eddie Obeid, a man found by ICAC, described, determined by ICAC, the Independent Commission Against Corruption, to have engaged in corrupt conduct. Uh, according to uh, Eddie O'B, John Robertson is somebody he's mentored. Now, Sam Dastyari is uh, 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 believed to be uh, off to the Senate, to be a New South Wales uh, representative for the Labor Party in the Senate. Matt Thistlewaite, who's just been pre-selected for Kingsford Smith, uh, described in a recent book about the Labor Party as somebody who uh, also was uh, regularly uh, meeting with Mr Obeid uh, and so he's been a, he's a senator at the moment. The point is that about a third of the uh, federal Labor caucus come from New South Wales. Now Nathan Rees, the former New South Wales Labor Premier, in an article in the Financial Review today said that Labor needed a fundamental culture change and there needed to be a, there needed to be a major reduction in union influence in the Labor Party. Uh, the Australian people, I think, will be looking at what the Independent Commission Against Corruption has found in New South Wales, that two Labor ministers uh, engaged in corrupt conduct, and they will be saying to themselves, there appears to be a systematic problem here. And the, way, the only way to address that problem and to ensure that there's no risk of the New South Wales disease infecting federal Labor and the federal parliament is for federal Labor to have a term, a, a period in opposition to get to the bottom of what's going on here because it's not good enough for federal Labor parliamentarians to say, oh, there's no connection between New South Wales Labor and federal Labor. You need merely look at how many senior Labor people in the federal government come from New South Wales. OK, well, we should just point out as well that those ICAC findings have not yet been proven in a court of law. We are out of time. Paul Fletcher, Steve Georgianis, thank you very much for your insights today. After the break, Pleasure. we're going to be speaking to a spokesperson for British American Tobacco to hear their thoughts on the government's tax increases on cigarettes.